How important is the first watt? Ooh, that's a juicy question. I like that one. So, um, this comes from Joe in Lancaster, New York. Do some amplifiers sound better at low volume than other amplifiers? And is it true if an amplifier doesn't get the first watt right, then it won't sound good at higher volumes? Well, <clears throat> let me see if I can... <laughs> One of the problems with engineers, and I used to think I was immune to it, but I clearly am not, is that we take things very literally. And sometimes it's hard for us to distinguish between a implied question and a literal question. So I'll give you the engineering literal answer. Yeah, a absolutely. You can get the first watt screwed up and have it work great at higher uh, levels. Uh, there, there's no correlation that I'm aware of between the first watt and the last watt um, in a literal sense. I think the bigger thing you're asking, and, and I'm trying to train my engineering head to um, have a broader reach so I can actually answer the question people are really asking. And generally, if a designer has taken the time to get the first watt right, the rest of the watts will be right. And the opposite is likely true. If an amplifier has very poor low level <coughs> excuse me, performance, um, generally speaking, it's not going to have great high-level performance either. And there are more engineers and designers that design poor amplifiers than good amplifiers by a country mile. So if you look at the typical design parameters of a power amplifier, say in the pro industry or in the let's just get an amplifier out, you know, they're going to do the thing that we always preach against, which is they are going to focus on specs and we're going to get distortion to be a certain level. We're going to get damping factor to be a certain way. And if we meet all of that stuff and it's got decent frequency response and it hits its mark and it doesn't overheat, we've got a great amp. And you probably do. But it doesn't necessarily sound good. And chances are if you're only thinking in those terms, it probably won't. A classic example is the Crown DC300A, if I remember it right. Now this was an, I think it may still be in service, I don't know. Crown is a very well-known, well-respected amplifier manufacturer that's generally used in pro gear. And it, the old 300, um, at least the ones I'm familiar with, were based on an op amp called the 301, if, if memory serves correct. Don't jump all over me if I'm getting some of this mixed up a little bit. But years ago, the, the Crown DC 300 um, was, was a very powerful, rock solid pro amplifier that sound reinforcement guys used for years and years. Audiophiles looked at that and said, wow, that's really cool. It puts out a whole ton of power and it's not that expensive and they are, they're rock solid reliable. And we took them home and we fired them up and it was like, holy crap, what, what happened here? I mean, seriously, if you take an old Crown 300 and you put it up in a decent resolving set of speakers in a listening room and you try and get music through that, it's flat. Grunt, you can't get a, a holographic image out of it. I mean, it's just, I, I'm, it's, it's, let's just say it's not musical. It's nothing that a high-end person would ever listen to because you can't hear differences in, in, in amplifiers and cables and all that through a, through a crown. You just can't. Now, is that same amplifier going to work okay in a live setting where we're going to power these big giant speakers? Sure, it's fine. We hear concerts all the time through crowns. I'm sure they're fine. You can't hear a whole lot of highly 
high fidelity stuff in a, in a live setting like that. I bet it, it would probably be better if you had something better, but let, let's not go there. Let's just suggest that for what they were intended for, they work great. The whole reason I bring this up is because those amplifiers were never designed to do what we would consider craft music in the way that a, a high-end audio system would appreciate. <clears throat> we used to try and use the, the 301 op amp, and they're just god-awful sounding things, really bad. Um, as, as a 741 op amp is, the, the op amp, uh, we've talked about it before, during that time, <clears throat> the, killer, the killer one was the 709. That sounded great, much nicer than a 741. And a 741, in many respects, had better specifications. So did a 300. They were easy to use. People used them, they just didn't sound good. So a designer that can get that first watt right will likely get the last watt right too. And so briefly, I'll touch on the, the first watt thing because there may be more to that question than you than you think. The first watt, the low level detail, is, is something that uh, designers work hard to get right, at least the ones you know, that, that, that really care about that. And there you want to have a decent amount of current going through the output stage so that uh, as the amplifier is working in its, its, its linear, it, it, it gets more into its linear region by having more current going through it, and that'll be hotter. And that's where you find these things, well, the first watt or two will be all class A, and then it goes to class A, B, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that's where all that comes from. But yeah, so all of that's important. I hope I didn't uh, work around your question too much, but uh, I believe if you can get the first watt right, you're likely going to get the others right too. Thank you for the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye.